All right, so it looks like our f uh, fun friend, Miss Chantal Marie, has decided what she's going to be doing as far as her diet goes, and it looks like she's become a fruititarian. Wow, all right. Well, we're going to see how that works, at least in her mind. Um, hopefully, she'll give us kind of details, because I'm not even sure how a fruititarian works exactly. Like, do you only eat fruit, and that's it? Like, because that's not healthy. But let's find out from her what she's planning on doing. Hey guys, hey, welcome back, welcome back. Today is going to be one of those days where I do a video because I do want to try to come on daily no matter what condition I'm in. And it's kind of a trying to get my place back the way it was, um, you know, everything back in order. So I kind of just have this messy bun it's not the cute kind of messy bun though it's like a as if a flock of seagulls <laughs> are nesting on my head kind of bun and uh oily skin because i have a serum on it right now so yeah and yes i look tired all right so before i start talking i love how she just starts spouting all the things she thinks people are gonna say i'm like i wouldn't have, i i'm not that observant so i would have been like okay whatever but i do like the fact that she has the um little wall thing behind her again i think i think that's actually kind of cute uh Definitely better than my setup, which is just my regular wall with a blanket on it. But, you know, hey, we do what we can. Sorry, my kitties are wanting to get into things they shouldn't. So, oops. Apologize for that now. <laughs> to you guys about what I want to talk to you about today. I just want to first say that what I'm about to talk about specifically pertains to, my, to me and my body and my system. I'm not going to be talking negatively about other diets, other forms of eating and nor should you because number one you're not a nutritionist so you don't know anything about any of the other day it's number two just because you're doing it now doesn't mean that it's something you're going to be doing forever and every time you try something new you always bash everything else so you're probably better off not doing that just saying other lifestyles that work for other people because what we have to remember is it's not uh me against them or them against me everybody is an individual and everybody is different. Mm -hmm. I have trouble breathing because I've been <laughs> cleaning, dusting, and kissing my cats. You know, the huge. Anyways, so um, it's not, this is not supposed to be a preachy video. This is just some things that I've noticed for myself. And as a result of really paying attention to how my body feels when I eat certain ways or um, do certain things, this is just meant to be me talking about my me my journey the daily chantel and like i said that's perfectly fine um i do wonder though like how well she really knows her body and my thing is too whenever you start a new like diet of any kind especially one that is completely different from what you used to do like when you're cutting everything out and doing blah blah, blah and you're adding all these new things or whatever you should really consult some kind of doctor I really think that's the better way to go like I've never done any drastic diets and if I ever do I'll make sure that it's okay for me to do those um, especially because I have had elevated um, blood pressure in the past just to be on the safe side but yeah I feel like you need to be really careful because just because you know girls on Instagram or celebrities or whomever are doing these diets doesn't make them healthy for you and you're right everybody is different so you need to make sure that it's safe so hopefully she's done that I don't know about how I feel, how I've been paying attention to really how I'm feeling, how my body feels when I eat a certain way. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about my digestive issues. So yeah, if, you know you know how they say that old joke, like, this is worse than listening to your grandma to, <laughs> to my, than my grandma talk about her digestive issues. It's kind of going to kind of kind of be like that, but I'm going to try to make that part not as long. But it is an important thing to talk about when it comes to health and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be talking a bit about today. And it's kind of a follow-up to my grocery haul from yesterday, because a lot of you have noticed some of the produce I've been buying, so I'm going to explain a little bit about that. And yeah, so um, so just keep in mind, if you are eating keto, if you are eating dirty keto, if you are eating uh, low carb, if you're eating air, whatever works for you, made you healthy, works for you, uh, made you successful at weight loss, that's all that matters. So, yep. all right, all right, so I also want... Yeah, and see, so that's why I have an issue with people saying, oh, well, I'm doing it this way, so this is the best way to do it, so you should do it this way. I'm like, you know, I kind of know how that is, because... 
the when I had started doing um, technically I was trying to do keto and I think I did that for like a couple weeks and then I was like no but when I started doing you know a certain way and I was learning all these things about carbs and how the body works and all this stuff I was in that mentality like oh well this is a better way to go but I'm not a preachy kind of person so I'm not going to just start telling people that um, but deep down I wanted to because I was like oh I found this new healthy way of doing things and she has a tendency to be like that oh well this is you know research tells me this is the better way to go and you guys should do that too and that's annoying nobody likes that and that's with anything if you find a new thing in life that you love no one wants you telling us how we all should be doing it I've had family who have found religion you know for the first time in their life I'm proud of them I'm happy for them but then all they want to do is try to tell you oh well now you need to believe this and you need to convert or whatever um, oh, you know, you're not religious enough or you don't blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, I'm happy for you, but let's not. I have to say that I know a lot of people are going to roll their eyes regarding saying, you know, oh, here we go. There's a cycle, blah, blah, blah. And talk about cycling Which in is a something negative sense. To do. Um, I want to cycle later. I'm actually grateful okay. for my cycling because if you're cycling, it means you haven't learned anything, Right. It means not that you haven't learned anything. You may have picked up some things each right. time. Each cycle might be different, but cycling is important. It's important to, I'm grateful for the cycles I've gone through and they've taught me a lot about myself, believe it or not. Um, so That's good, I'm focusing on the positive of the cycling. So in every cycle, pretty much, I go through this phase where I'm, you know, I'm, as a food addict, I go through these phases where I, I don't even know where you would start in, this, in a circle. <laughs> I guess it would just be, um, you have these moments of clarity. You go through these, Binges, the cycle of being off the wagon, basically, of just binging and eating terribly, eating whatever you want, you know, you know, giving into your food addiction, not being able to control it, to getting, you, you start feeling ill, your body starts feeling sick, and you're, you start feeling, you, you're just more depressed, and you start feeling like, oh, okay, I need to make a change. So you have the, all these moments of clarity, these moments of awakening, and you start, you start feeding your body healthy food. You start, you know, saying, I have a grip on this, and, um, and then you start to, you know, it gets tough because you're going through withdrawal. Your, your body's like, your mind and your body are like, I want this food. I want this food, you know? Um, give it to me. Why aren't you giving it to me? You've had it for 30, you know, 30 years or whatever, 20 years. Why are you not giving me this food anymore? I want fat, sugar, salt. I want processed food, which is hyper palatable. And you're giving your body clean food. And meanwhile, you're just, it's wreaking havoc on your system because your body is used. Yeah. And I love how, like, she's like this, um person of like knowledge all of a sudden you know like like she knows all of this stuff and and she's this educator now of all this and I'm just like yeah I mean I get that you probably know things but putting them in action is the big thing and sticking to them is the big thing and so <laughs> um like I don't know like I feel like she should wait to do videos like this until she's been doing it for a while and like she can say yeah I've been doing this for six months and it's been working and I've been consistent and these are the things that I've learned um, whereas like she always does it at the very beginning of whatever new diet she's doing and then like a week later she's like oh I realize this isn't sustainable because a B and C and it's like yeah but you were over here just talking to us about how you know you know this is right for your body because you know how your body works so if that's the case how is this a wrong way to do it and so that's just what I'm worried is going to happen I, I hope not but I do worry that that's what's going to happen to that and it doesn't want that to change so sorry, I'm thirsty for it. that's another thing i gotta get to is always thirsty so then you say all right Ow. sorry my cat is like poking will you stop look i know you want to play out but your claws are getting me in i need to clip their nails you try to you're getting me in the knee it's not feeling so good oh <sighs> I'm a cat person. When Eating right super clean is scary. I think I'm, it's going to cause me to binge. I better eat in moderation. So you would go to something, something like try, try something, try some normal diet that people are doing. You know, like Weight Watchers, where you can eat things in moderation. You know, like okay, you can have a bowl of chips. It's uh six or seven points. You can eat at the restaurant, but you got to watch your points. <clears throat> and I know it sounds like I'm being condescending, but I'm not. I'm, I, uh, Weight Watchers is a great system for a normal person. And I did read about this in. Um, oh God, I've been I've been reading a lot, so I don't know, can't remember where I, I need to start writing down my sources. But yeah, that's important. Uh, one of the things I've been learning is that um, if you're going to find a source, number one, you need to ask yourself 
do they gain anything from the information that they're giving you? Because if so, they're probably biased and it's not a good source. Uh, and then number two, you know, what is their background? Um, are they just some, you, some uh, you know, Googler, like this young woman here, who's saying, oh yeah, you know, I found this on Google, blah, 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 and this is what I, you know, this is what I know. And it's like, mm, no, I don't, I don't really trust that. I'm just going to tell you that right, right off the bat. Like, so that's, uh, you know, those are important things to ask yourself when it comes to uh, the sources that you find. And I wonder, does she just Google, you know, oh, this is the diet I'm going to try, blah, blah, fruitarianism or whatever, and then just find the top 10 articles, you know, no matter who they're from, or is she really looking at the sources? You know, it's for a normal person, a normal eater who is not super morbidly obese, maybe has a few pounds to lose, 20, 30 pounds, and isn't a food addict and doesn't have an eating disorder exactly. because you can be overweight and not have an eating disorder. For those people, they can have something in moderation. They definitely can have something in moderation. For a food addict, unfortunately, and this is the hardest part to accept, is that you have to completely, I'm not saying you, I have to completely, and I've done, and have learned this from cycling, completely eliminate any trigger food. Um, any yeah. food, I, any food I want to eat, I, I, you know, go through and say, okay, can I see myself binging on this? Because yes, if I- And that's really true. I do that too. Um, you know, if I don't cut out the triggering foods for me, which is pretty much anything junk, um, I tend to, oh, I'm going to have a little bit and then I have a lot. And so that's a big thing for me. That's something I'm working on. But instead of cutting it all out at once, because I've done that, and then I'm just like crave, 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 crave. Um, I'm just moderating how much of it I eat. I'm calculating my calories. I'm calculating the serving sizes and that sort of thing to kind of get my body used to having less. And then I'm going to take more away and replace it with other things um and i think that's a good way to go for me um some people are really good at doing cold turkey uh i'm not um it, it has not worked for me at least not as of yet so yeah i mean i agree with that i have nothing else in the house and i have baked chicken breast seasoned chicken breast uh, salad dressing and a salad i will eat eight portions of that no problem i can binge on that and that's considered a healthy meal uh not i can I, not eight portions of it, but even too much of a good thing is, is too much. Just remember that. Told there's some healthy food I can binge on. The thing I have thing, so I ask myself, can I see myself binging on it? And if the answer is yes, I don't eat it. And that leaves me with very, very few options to eat, of course. But that's a good thing. And I, and I always saw that as restrictive, but as an addict, you have to, I have to eliminate all triggers and I have to only eat what I need and nothing else. Because for me, a big part of that addiction as well is letting go of food being a friend for me, food being a part of my life, just like in all the wrong ways, like that clingy, possessive boyfriend or friend that just, it's, you know, I'm, I'm done. I want out of this prison. I, I just like have these moments of, of, depressed dep deep depression where i just think oh my god all of the things i could have done with my life and i didn't because i was too busy eating um and it's true you know it's just like life has passed me by and it just feels like groundhog day over and over and over and it's just like yeah it's so sickening and i just feel like there's a lot of changes that need to happen behavioral wise too and coming to realize that nothing is going to help me except myself i yeah, true. But the question is like, what are you doing specifically to help with the behavioral issue? Because just you telling yourself this needs to change isn't enough. Because if it were, you wouldn't go back to the same things over and over again. So you really have to delve into what causes you to, to binge in the first place. You know, what caused your eating disorder in the first place and work through those things. Because if not, you're just going to keep that cycle that you seem to be so fond of over and over again. And what good is a cycle if it's just going to continue and continue? Like, fine, you're learning from it, great. But at some point it has to end and not be a cycle anymore. And that's the thing, you know, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then what's the point? I have to suffer. I have to, you know, go through the pain. And it's that pain that, that you, it's just so tough to get through. And that's a character flaw. There's, there's no responsibility, sense of responsibility and discipline that I need to exercise those, um, these, this group of, uh, personality traits. I guess you would, call, I don't know what you'd call them, but this, this group of traits, uh, attributes 
that I need to exercise in order to become successful in this. And that's where some kind of, you know, it's, it's cognitive behavioral therapy is good for that. Yes, um, therapy. To, tools to develop these traits, this sense of discipline, this sense of responsibility on oneself, you know, because I have been so looking for reasons outside of myself as to what, why I am this way or why I can't follow through with anything. And a lot of it is that it's a lot of hard work and I'm afraid of hard work when it comes to this. So it's a, it, you know, it's like a big part of it is that I'm just really not disciplined. And, um, because, you know, a, a, an addict, you know, it, even though you're addicted, yes, it's terrible and you have a lot working against you, you have to put in the work. No one's going to do it for you, right? And that's a no-brainer. Um, like I posted on my Instagram, there was like a saying, it was like, you can't take the elevator, you got to take the stairs when it comes to health. And um, so anyways, yeah. I'm kind of all over the place. I should start like making bullet points and yes. not deviating from them until I'm yes. done a certain subject. Anyways, the cycle is, um, it's taught me what my body will tolerate and what it won't because I can pay attention to certain things so this uh, this diet that i'm left with when i ask myself am i going to binge on these foods i'm left with basically certain uh, any fruit but um certain vegetables and certain vegetables will i have a very okay see now that's the thing like i'm wondering is that how she decided oh i could be a fruitarian because i don't binge on these things or did she really research what that means and frankly I don't know what that means I really would like to know like is that like how is it different from vegetarian do you eat less vegetables so you don't call it a veg I don't get that like I, I don't understand that term please if she doesn't explain it in this video someone in my comment section give me a link or something because or when I mean not a link I guess you can't do that but tell me a little bit about fruitarianism because I got no clue I, I'm like dumbfounded at the moment Here's the digestive system part. My digestive system is very sensitive, very, 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 very sensitive to the point where I have my, okay, I don't know how to talk about this without being gross. If you're grossed out, don't watch this, okay? I've never been fully diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure it's IBS, uh, irritable bowel, because so many things will trigger a loose stool almost right after I eat. On top of that, I have no gallbladder. So my body, which your no, gallbladder, totally you know, they'll say, oh, you don't need your gallbladder. That's another problem I have. That's another video. You don't need your gallbladder. It's, you know, it's a vestigial organ. You could live without it. You can live without it, but it's a very important organ in your digestive system. Um, it emulsifies fats. It, it's responsible for breaking down fats. Um, it's an important organ. <laughs> and it's just, it's not there anymore. So when I eat something that's high fat, which is why keto doesn't work for me, um, even clean keto, like it, because things that are very high in protein as well, like um, it, it, meat, I notice any kind of meat, dairy, especially that's, I cannot have dairy in moderation. If I buy cheese and have it in the house, um, which it is a staple on keto, I know it doesn't have to be, but you know, a lot of people eat dairy and keto. It's okay. Even, even the weight loss doctor was like, you can have um, 10 proteins a day. You can have as much cheese, you know, make that as much cheese as you want. It, goes right it, it really irritates my my digestive system and i'll binge on it if i have a block i can eat the whole thing see i feel like she could come up with more tactful ways to say these things but she doesn't and then she puts ranch runs which don't even want to know at the bottom i'm pretty sure that's something disgusting that i'm pretty sure i have the concept of but i'm not gonna say anyway like, she could absolutely find more tactful ways to say these things, but she doesn't. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't find a better way to say this yet. Yeah, you can't. I have digestive issues. There you go. We don't need to know the details. We don't need to know the specifics. I'm just going to tell you that right now. No one needs to know that. That's your problem. That's your issue. That's on you. Like, you, we get it. You say digestive issues. We'll just, you know, in our minds, go through the range of issues you could possibly be having. There you go. Okay, good for us. So, mm, no, thank you. Um. So, it's just that... I have to continually until I get progressively better. That initial, whenever you have, and I, I know people hate when I compare this because they don't treat food addiction the same as any other addiction. They think that, okay, heroin addiction, for example, it can kill you. Yes, it, food addiction can kill you too, but it's more gradual. Um, so in that sense, heroin addiction is more dangerous. But food scientifically has been proven to have the same pleasure response in the brain as drugs such as heroin. Yeah, it does. Sugar I'm not making is. that up. You can do the research yourself. I'm yeah. not here to tell you all the research. That's I don't true. have time in this video to do that, but you can do it yourself. So it's, you have to go through that initial, you know, dreaded withdrawal where you lock yourself in a facility or a room and 
you know, you, you have to completely cold turkey it. And that's what you need to do with food. And um, the withdrawal won't kill you or could kill you like it can with, it's not that serious, but it is felt very much psychologically, especially um, I get headaches, nausea, I do get dizzy, um, very, 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 very depressed. And as soon as I give in and I eat something, I feel instantly better. So what does that tell you, right? Yep. So you have to push through that and it's so hard. I, I, yeah, I mean, she's not lying and it is true, you know, with the receptors in the brain, it's the pleasure center and it does affect it. Um, of course there are differences between drug addiction, alcohol addiction and food addiction, but they both, they all have similarities to them. Uh, you know, they just affect you differently. And she's right, like, food addiction will kill you if you're not careful with it. It'll just kill you over time, um, which we've seen. I mean, anyone who watches My 600 Pound Life, there have been people who have died even after losing the weight because of what being morbidly obese did to their bodies. Um, and so, yeah, she's, she's right. Oh, why is it... I don't think I've ever been fully successful and it, there's no telling how long it's going to last. That's the thing. You know, it could be a few days to get over a hump, but then it's always there. Like addiction is, it gets easier to deal with, but you have to fight it every day because it's always in the shadows waiting for you to have a weak moment. Um, and with food, it's in your face all everywhere, everywhere. Everyone's eating. Everyone's asking you to go out to eat. Um, you know, there's five fast food places just around the corner. You need oh, yeah. to go grocery shopping. There's temptation there. And a lot of fast food chains, you know, and I learned this, uh, that like the colors that they use in their um, emblems and stuff can induce hunger, which is hilarious to me. I didn't know that was a thing, but I, I don't doubt it. I mean, subliminal messaging, you know, um, but yeah, so like, you know, every, every corner there's a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Jack and Box or a Wendy's or a blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that is so true. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And it's so hard to avoid. Um, it's a cultural food is ingrained in our culture. It's a social thing. It's we need it for survival. And but we don't need certain food for survival. And that's you know that's all that food's supposed to be. And I think once you give your palate time to adjust and get you know you, you don't give yourself that added salt. You don't give yourself added sugar uh, unless you know very low fat. And that's what you you give your body time to your palate to cleanse and. Uh, Excuse you. Your body to detoxify. See, could have edited that out. Absolutely could have edited that out. That's why I'm like, she could say whatever she wants, but she's the one that makes these videos and posts them. So, from all of that processed crap that you've been eating forever, and I think once that happens, it gets easier. You start to appreciate the taste of real food, and so here's where um, I know I'm going to get criticized a lot by people, but that's okay. Um, the only foods, like I said, that don't hurt my system, I feel the best, is when I eat really fresh, hydrating food. Now, I've been on and off, on and off with this, so, so I'm not experiencing the full benefit of this way of eating, but if I know that I'm consistent, then I know that I will. I feel like there will be a huge health breakthrough. Because anybody who I've ever watched, and I do watch a lot of people, and I follow people on Instagram, who are high raw, um, fruitarian, uh, vegan, and it's... Um, they just look so like they're glowing <laughs> you know like they have this like vitality this glowing yeah i mean but i don't think it's for everyone i mean we are omnivores for a reason i mean physically our bodies are meant to have both fruit veggie or all so both meat and non-meat products there that's the best way to put that one um i mean we are omnivores so that means we eat both so our if you're gonna take certain foods away like meat then you need to make sure that you're taking supplements to replenish whatever you're going to be losing from that. Um, or you find if there's a vegetable equivalent or a fruit equivalent, as far as like the protein and the, you know, whatever that you're getting from the meat, fine. But I feel like that's not 100% the case. It's, it's all about balance. Um, I mean, I know someone who became a vegetarian because meat did affect her very badly. So it does in some people. I don't know why that is. I know people are built differently, and that's and if that's the case, as she, you know, she's saying that it probably is for her. That's great, but you you can't just rush into that kind of diet. That's why I said always talk to a doctor 
uh, before considering anything like that. Look, like, um, and that's, you know, when you eat fresh fruits and vegetables, a lot of them have high um, water content. Some fruits are like 90 something percent water, you know, so it's possible to drink your hydration. But being hydrated is what's responsible for that glowy look, that really dewy skin look, that beautiful skin look. And that's why when so I did I that, I know I always go back to that, but that five day water fast was, I mean, I felt um, changes in myself that were just amazing. Like my skin looks so amazing. You guys noticed it. Um, but unfortunately, I had a very weak moment and uh, stopped it. Um, so, now this is going to be very ambitious and it's going to be very hard, which is why I want to check in with you guys daily. Um, yes, for accountability. And I really don't understand my mindset of that defensive when I ask for accountability and then when I go off my plan and people, you know, not give me shit, but give me shit. <laughs> I take it so, so wrong and it's because I know I'm wrong. You know, I know I'm wrong and I get defensive about it, but like... I don't understand my mentality back then of that. And it wasn't that long ago, but I don't understand how, why would I think I wouldn't, wouldn't, why would I think that I'm always right? You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. It's just really weird. Yeah. Well, I feel like, you know, we all get defensive when it's something we're passionate about and that's true. But I also feel like it's a maturity level to be able to handle that. And I don't feel like you're completely there as far as maturity goes. Um, and maybe that's why like you act so defensive and you throw tantrums when we try to tell you the truth and it's like because you don't want to hear the truth unless you know right now you're on this happiness like yay I'm doing some new diet so now you want to hear everyone's opinion about it and you're like oh this is great and da 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 but the moment you stop and you go back to your old ways you don't want to hear it anymore I get it because I've done that I mean not to your extent I'm not yelling at people about it or anything but that is why the different mindsets I've gone through so I want to check in every day because especially at first it's very dangerous and if I feel like if I don't I'll just go missing again and come up with some excuse or whatever uh, when I come back so we're going to do this for a while and on top of this though this daily check-in I will do other videos so sometimes I might have two videos in a day like when I do a makeup review or product review that will be a separate video or when I do an adventure or go out do something that will be a different video but the check-ins are gonna be what I'm eating weigh-ins stuff like that so um yeah so I just wanted to, to explain I'm going to be eating for example when I wake up I'm going to have um, some water this is um, and, okay another thing is I'm, so I'm doing this type of eating for health because just because a way of eating allows you to lose weight doesn't mean you're getting all the nutrients involved. So I'm focusing on micronutrients, um, you know, antioxidants, minerals, making sure you have all the minerals, all the vitamins, uh, selenium, zinc, magnesium, potassium, all those things you can get easily from eating um, plant-based diet. And so I really just want to say that that's why I'm doing this because of the way I, my body feels. Um, which I can I can thank the cycling for that because I can really pay attention to okay and I've been journaling that. Mm. I mean, all I can say is we'll see. Let's see how long this goes. You know, if by I mean I'm trying to think what was the longest um, diet plan she was ever on, and I don't think she's ever gone more than a week. I don't think. If I'm wrong, let me know. Like I said, I've only been watching most of these channels and only through reaction channels for about a year. And I haven't really gone back to watch their old videos, couldn't care less, whatever. And that's why I wanted to start at the beginning of the year doing my reactions, because I wanted it to, to be a new year. I'm not going to really look back at the things they've done. Not that I don't know some of the things they've done, and I have mentioned them because they're relevant to, to now. But it's not like I'm saying, oh, because you failed in the past, you're going to fail now. No. Like, I'm hopeful that this is their year to do what they need to do. And I will continue commenting and and um, reacting, uh, even if that doesn't end up the case and they go back to their old ways. And then I will comment about that. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a source of... Um, sorry, my brain just drew blank of the word, a source of inspiration, but not even inspiration, support basically for them. And that's what I want to do. So I'm just, you know, even if, but I'm also a realist 
So I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, puppy dogs and kittens is one of them. The weight loss isn't puppy dogs and kittens. Like, yeah, no, I'm not going to be here like that. Like, I'm, I get it. Like, I see the things that they've done and I see how things have gone in the past, but I'm also going to try to keep a little more optimism, you know, in the mix. Um, okay, I just had Harvey's. I feel like crap because I just ate crap. You know, you you are what you eat. It's so true because if you eat a greasy burger and onion rings, how are you going to feel after? You've pretty much given your body nothing. Yeah, which is funny because she went to the grocery store to get healthy items for her new healthy diet and then she went and had fast food. That's the thing. She she doesn't have the um, ability to control her eating. She's a visual eater. If she sees a restaurant or if she sees this, she goes and she craves it, which I get. I'm like that too. But that's what she has to work on because she's just going to continue the cycle. But the bad fats and protein, some protein. Um, so it's like there's, it's just completely devoid of nutrition. So of course you're going to feel bad. And then, oh my God. So my digestive system is just, it can tolerate very few foods. So it has to be like, I find my, my belly feels very good when I eat um, fresh fruit, never have a problem. I don't even have to go to the bathroom sometimes for maybe once a day at first. Like I don't get that. You know, for me, people say pee is number one, poo is number two. For me, the reverse is, is true. Um, the amount of times I run to the bathroom, like pizza and I would go for dinner, for example. Um, I would uh, have dinner, probably like a greasy appetizer and whatever else. And I would have to go to the bathroom right away. Um, even if it's a salad. Right now, even salad. Big salads will irritate it. So I find liquid, um, like smoothies. I bought a Vitamix, so we're going to be using it. Um, oh, dry mouth. Jeez. Oh, talking too much. Ah, time to go. So what we're going to do. Right. So what I'm going to do is. It's a pricey. Uh, I don't know. Like, I get it. She's trying to explain things. But come on, girl. Edit a little better. Like, take some of this stuff out. Like. The rambling stuff, for, for instance, you don't need to put it in there. Like, if I'm doing a video and I'm rambling on and on, I'm like, mm, maybe cut that out. I mean, maybe not so much here because I'm reacting to your video. So I don't like to edit these too much unless, I, like I said, I get interrupted because I just want to make them consistent. And I don't want anything missed. I don't want anyone to say, oh, you're making it look a certain way. So I don't edit them as far as that goes. Investment, but it's for my health, right? So, um... I have a juicer, so I want to drink fresh juice right in the morning. A celery juice, um, carrot ginger juice, something like that. Apple juice, um, so yeah. And then maybe for lunch, a mono fruit meal. And maybe for dinner, a huge green smoothie. I bought bags of spinach. I have chia seeds, which um, have so much calcium and good protein yeah, and good I fat, um, omega-3s. And I will be taking um, a multivitamin. I have a um, good quality multivitamin on the way which will have like B12 and stuff like that. And um, I know that's the thing, like I know you guys are gonna roll your eyes and say, oh, plant-based again. But it's, for me, I'd rather, I feel better trying over and over instead of just what, like what's the alternative then, guys? Like, what do you want me to do? Trying is one thing, but like, you need to stick with something. Cause trying does nothing. If trying over and over again helped you, you wouldn't be 400 pounds right now. You wouldn't be unhealthy, but it doesn't help you. So you need to do more than try. You need to do it. That's the thing. Try and get you nowhere. Just saying. Give up fully, you know? I know that the ideal answer would be follow through. And that's, you know, that's, I mean, the only thing, I can't convince anybody because I've been through this so many times. So all I gotta say is, I guess we'll just have to wait and see, you know? Exactly. Um, and you're allowed to comment, you know, things like, here we go, blah, 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 your opinion. Um, you know, that's fine with me. As long as it's respectful, that's fine with me. I don't mind. So, um, other than that, we'll see. uh, yeah. So I guess I think I talked about everything. So for the time being, that's how I want to eat because I want to give my digestive system a reboot, a chance to heal. I could tell there's a lot of inflammation, um, because of how bloated I am and how painful it is when I go to the bathroom and just how frequent I have to go. Like one time I had an empty stomach and I sucked on a butterscotch candy that had real cream butter and I think like fake sugar and I had to go to the bathroom after sucking the candy it like triggered when you suck on candy or chew gum I think it triggers your body your digestive system to start like wake up and say okay you're gonna be consuming something so I just want to give it a little bit of a break and I've actually heard that chewing gum tricks your mind into thinking you are eating or tricking your body or whatever it is and um it can actually be like an appetite suppressant or something. I don't know how true that is, but I think it's kind of 
kind of interesting if it is true. Feed it things that have like natural probiotics, things that are naturally which like high fiber, but um, things that just are, you know, liquid nutrition. Um, I, I, I know when you guys, some of you guys um, hear fruit juice or fruit and only think of the sugar. Um, if you, you know, fructose, fructose that isn't in, in fruit is not enough for it to be bad for you. And our body, our brains especially, need sugar. Um, so for me personally, I know a lot of people are going to talk shit on sugar in my comment section. I don't believe any of that to be true. I don't think that, I don't know any diabetic fruitarians. There are some people who eat, granted they don't have insulin resistance to begin with, but I don't think that sugar, um, fruit sugar, natural sugar, is the cause of diabetes. I don't think that it is harmful. Um, and I th Honestly, that might be the case. I don't know. Like, you know, it depends on who you ask. You know, because if you ask someone doing keto, natural sugars are worse for you and imitation sugars are better because that's what you're allowed to have. Um, but if you ask someone who is a fruititarian, they're going to say the opposite. So I guess it just depends on who you ask. Even doctors don't have consistent ideas on that either. So it's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, like, I, I'm sure natural is better for you than processed in any way, shape, or form, but too much of it is still not good for you. Like, I mean, I think it's what, five fruits and vegetables a day? So if that's all you're getting, or, the, you know, if you're just meeting the quota that they recommend, then that's fine. And I'm sure it has more to do, you have to look at the, the uh, actual sugar count and that sort of thing, and how much you should be consuming a day. But, I don't know. I think it's actually good for you. That's just my opinion on the research I've done for myself. You are more than welcome. Of course, there's going to be counter research on that. Um, yeah. You could argue about that all day, <laughs> you know, till you're blue in the face in the comment sections or with somebody. And it's just a matter of opinion at the end of the day, what you want to believe. And that's what I feel is healthiest for my body, um, just based on how it feels. That's how I'm going to be eating for now until I feel a bit better. Once I start feeling better, I'm going to slowly introduce, you know, more meals. Like, um, I'll probably still have maybe like fully raw um, for most of the day, and then maybe have because of cooked food. My thing is, eating raw is incredibly difficult, especially for someone who's fast food, fast food, fast food. I couldn't do it. No way I could do it, and I don't consume half as much as she does. I'm at least 150 pounds lighter than she is but it's it's just difficult so someone who doesn't have that control I just don't I just don't see it I, I'm gonna be honest like I would be incredibly surprised if this was something that she sustained very surprised um, from what I read is dehydrating to the body. Hydration is very important. And I'm always just chronically thirsty, like just always thirsty. And that's a sign of diabetes too. But it's because I'm not eating any foods that are hydrating, you know? So fruit is very hydrating. Um, See, I don't eat a lot of fruits or a lot of foods that are hydrating and I'm never thirsty. Like I drink, I think this is more of a boredom or like a mechanism, but you know, of course, if I work out or whatever, do anything extraneous, then yeah, I get thirsty. But if I'm just like chilling at home, I'm not really all that thirsty usually. I can't wait for watermelon season. <laughs> I'm just going to eat watermelon all summer. Mm -hmm. I just, that's just, you know, you're going to say, well, you're not getting enough protein. You're not getting enough. They that's not true. Spinach has a lot of calcium, has protein. The chia that's seeds spinach. that I'm going to be putting in my smoothies. So there's a lot of ways to get nutrition. And plus, on top of that, this way of eating and drinking is going to be so complete in the micronutrient department which allows healing, which allows um, longevity of life, it's anti-aging, um, it's anti-cancer. There's a lot of nutritional um, proponents in these fruits and vegetables that get ignored a lot. Um, or, un you know, they just get swiped under the rug and people just pay attention mostly to macro groups, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates when there's a whole world of micronutrients up there. So yeah, so we'll see guys, we'll see. So I hope you just friggin', just, let's just do this, okay? Let's just do this. <laughs> and um, it might sound extreme. To me, it doesn't, it's not extreme. It's not extreme. It's, it's, I'm sure I just feel that it's right, you know? I always did, but I always let my addiction get the better of me and try to, you know, just convince me that, okay, you can have some of 
just have some cheese and uh, whatever, you know, in moderation. But yeah. So anyways, um, I guess that's it for today's video. It's going to be kind of long. So this is just me explaining what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to check in with you guys. I do have a different attitude than any time I've done this before. I'm not going to disappear. If I slip up, I'm just going to come on here and face music. Yeah, and I wonder, okay, fine. People, record this last part right here where she says this and see, and then play it back to her if she does the opposite of this. If she gets defensive and if she blah, 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 after she, and it, like, let's say if she fails and then she starts going back to basically defensiveness and her anger and stuff, like, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. You know, that's, there's, there's, there's just... There's no growth in just thinking you're always right and just being blind to criticism. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, so I guess that's it. So, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. I actually like this ending better than the... Thank you. That one, like, drives me nuts. It's like nails on a uh, chalkboard. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't trust her as of yet. I'm just gonna say, like, my trust, you know, is like, here's the line, here's where she's at right now. So we'll see. And she's right, you know, if you continuously say you're gonna do something and then not do it, eventually people just start to assume you're not gonna do it and they don't believe in you. And you can't blame them or get angry with them. Like, yeah, be more angry with yourself for being the reason that they think that in the first, in the first place. But I am going to go. I have to leave in like three minutes to go uh, meet up with some people. So, yeah. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Um, I'm probably not going to upload this for a day or two, depending on how slow my computer is, because I have like five videos that I still have to upload. <laughs> so I apologize that my videos are never like right when the person does their video, but until I get a good PC... This is what we're working with. All right, thank you guys so much for watching.